Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video, we're going to have a look at the brushes and illustrations I made during the second week of Brushtober 2022, so let's jump right into it. <coughs> Brushtober is a special event where I create a Procreate brush and an illustration with that brush every day through October. You can see my daily progress on my Instagram or Twitter accounts, so make sure to follow through the links below. If you want to know how you can get this brush set for free for a limited time, check out the info in the description of this video for all the details. For day 9, I made this brush called Bursting Stroke. It is an inking brush that looks fairly clean when you draw with low pressure, but it kind of explodes with a nice texture in the edges the more pressure you apply. I thought on drawing a silly medieval warrior character with it. As usual, I started with a rough sketch to explore on the idea, and here's where I made all the little decisions, like the general shape design, the pose, the features, weapons and the outfit. I kept it all in a pretty simplistic style, that I felt was going to work really well for this brush. When inking the final line art, I kept the lines fairly thick for the exterior, but lowered the size of the brush a little bit for the inner lines and details. I also threw in some quick flat colors to make the art pop, using the brush in a really big size to get some cool texture in things like the background or the shading in the skin. On day 10, I worked on this brush that mimics a real round mechanical pencil. There was a time in my life where I used a lot of mechanical pencils to draw my comics and they were a lot of fun to sketch with. Since this one is digital, it can be more versatile since you can change the size in a way that's impossible to physical mechanical pencils. For this doodle, I wanted to sketch some plants in a more or less realistic style. First I used the brush with a medium size to quickly lay down the position and proportions of all the elements in my composition. When I had that, I lowered the opacity of the sketch layer and started to refine my drawing on a new layer on top using a smaller size of the brush, something closer to a real mechanical pencil tip. Whenever I felt like it, I allowed myself to alternate between drawing lines and shading different parts of my drawing. This kept the feeling of drawing with a real pencil in a fresh way. I also used the same brush with the eraser tool from time to time to get some of the details in the negative space. By tilting the apple pencil, I was able to add some soft shading to some areas that I wanted to have more out of focus, like the legs of the stools. In the end I added a few shaded squares in the background to make the plants stand out. On day 11, I came up with this cool brush that is perfect for quick little paintings. It has an insanely good blending quality, a subtle grainy texture, and soft edges when pressing low, but hard edges when pressing hard. I call this brush Casual Painter. For this painting, I wanted to do a quick caricature of the cool white wolf in this photo reference by Dusan Weber Kolog. I started by loosely painting the main colors in the background and then working out the main shapes for the rock and for the animal. This is where I dedicated some time to think of the way I wanted to exaggerate and deform the wolf's shapes to turn it into a caricature. I have to say that I've never done a caricature of an animal before. 
I've drawn cartoon animals before, but for this I was aiming at the more classic concept of a human caricature translated to an animal. When I was happy with the main shapes, I alpha locked the layer and started to sculpt the shadows and light areas with my brush. Since the general shapes were simplified, I also tried to keep my rendering and details fairly simple. I was trying to come up with the minimum number of brush strokes that would allow me to give life to this character while also making the most of the shapes in my brushwork. At the end I dedicated some time to detail the rock under the wolf and the forest in the background. For day 12, I was craving for a brush with a more aggressive texture to it, and I created this one I called Spilled Pills. I think the little shapes in the texture speak for themselves. I also gave just a tiny bit of chromatic variation to this brush that may not be super visible on screen for you right now, but I assure you it's there. Since Halloween is slowly approaching, I was feeling like drawing something related to the theme. I thought painting a little pumpkin guy asking for candy would be pretty fun to test this brush. I started with a dark blue to turquoise gradient for the background. And then on a layer on top, I jumped to define the character. I kept this painting simple as well, focusing on giving the pumpkin guy a goofy face. Again painting first the general shapes and alpha locking the layer, I was able to render the different parts by painting lights and shadows within those shapes. I also added a speech balloon in yellow with a trick or treat dialogue. As a final touch, I painted a wrapped candy and duplicated it a few times to create this subtle pattern to decorate the background. Wild Liner is my brush for day 13. The tip of this brush is a triangle that slightly changes its proportions depending on how much pressure you apply. This brush is great for thin to thick line work and also surprisingly good for blending with a pretty cool effect. I was surprised that I hadn't drawn any skulls in this brush tober yet, so I had to do something about it. For this drawing, I did a cute looking skeleton, painting something with a brush on a canvas. My idea was to test out this brush for inking in a detailed but loose style, allowing myself to be sloppy with my line work, and I think it turned out great. Sometimes we get too obsessed with drawing perfect lines, and we keep undoing, so it's nice to forget about that for a moment and doing an exercise like this. As you can see, I left the canvas blank until the end, and then I decided that this guy was painting a cute shrimp. I just found the idea super funny. To color this piece, I took advantage of the triangular shape of this brush to paint this graphic background. And then I painted the rest of the drawing, adding little touches of color and experimenting with the smudge tool to soften some of the hard edges. I 
I also colored some of the line art and added a few final shadows from the arm on the canvas and from the skeleton and the easel on the floor. On day 14, I kept going the experimental route with this liner brush made out of three round tips of different sizes. This allows for certain randomization that I thought it would be pretty interesting to work with. I called this brush three tips. Continuing with drawing goofy looking characters, I drew this happy little crab that wants to be an artist or something, so he's holding this huge pencil over his head. I gave him a nice mustache because it made him look funnier. What I like the most about this brush is how cool the line work looks with it. It has the right amount of randomness so that each stroke looks organic and unique giving the unpredictability of a real inking pen that has the tip a little worn out. I added a lot of little lines for texture and shading and also darker areas by increasing the density of the lines. When coloring this drawing, I followed the same approach and painted with messy brushwork and even added more little lines with the colors. For the color palette, I went back a little bit with the scheme previously established for this brushed over edition but going slightly more orange for the crab. For day 15, I felt like doing a calligraphy brush. I almost never do calligraphy brushes, mainly because I suck at doing calligraphy myself, but I thought others could give this brush some real use. I called this one, Elegant Calligrapher. Since I'm the worst at doing calligraphy, I did some random little stupid looking characters instead. To take advantage of the amazing flow of this brush, I started by drawing a lot of random shapes, like some sort of bubbles floating in the air. Then when I filled the entire space, I started adding eyes, noses and mouths to those shapes. This drawing was super silly, but I had a lot of fun, and sometimes that's all you need. And that's it for today, these are the 7 brushes I did this week for my Brushtober Challenge 2022. Let me know in the comments which of these brushes was your favorite so far. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video and give me a thumbs up. Also make sure to check out my Gumroad page and consider making a purchase before the end of October to get this unique brush set for free. I have tons of Procreate brush sets available and I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.